We've had the 9DAC OPD3 for quite some time. Actually, before the OPD3, it was called the 3D Way. The OPD3 for me is absolutely necessary in order to calculate the best possible implant for each eye of every patient. It helps me customize the implant to every eye of every patient. The first thing I look at is the root mean square, RMS value. RMS value tells me how clean the image is of the light going in and out of the eye. If the RMS value is high, that means that the patient's post-operative outcome will most probably not be 2020 due to underlying pathology. It could be macular issues, it could be corneal issues. It tells the, it tells the surgeon and the patient that you have to set proper expectations, that the vision may not be 2020. The next thing I look at is the axial map, which tells me the amount, the location, and the pattern of the anterior corneal astigmatism. If it's a very irregular astigmatism pattern, if it's a keratoconus pattern, or pellucid, then that patient may not be an ideal candidate for a toric implant. On the other hand, if it's a beautiful bow tie pattern, then that patient is a perfect candidate for a toric implant. Patients have a hard time understanding corneal astigmatism. Therefore, they don't understand why it may benefit them to um, choose a toric implant, which of course has an out-of-pocket component. By showing my patients the image of the bow tie on a large monitor and the OPD3 has fabulous color maps, the patient can readily see, in quotes, their astigmatism. They see their bow tie. Therefore, they say, oh my gosh, now I see what my astigmatism is. Therefore, they are much more apt to now recognize the need or the benefit of a toric implant. The other way that I use the OPD3 is I look at point spread function, and I actually show this to my patient. I show them what the higher order aberration is with a cataract in the eye and what it's going to look like after the cataract is removed or the lower aberration is removed, leaving only their higher order aberrations. Some patients have quite a bit of higher order aberration. By letting the patient know ahead of time that a pinpoint of light may look like it has feathered edges or kind of tails, they know that this is their pre-existing higher order aberration and not a flaw of the implant or a complication of the surgery. And the final thing I use the OPD3 for is we take a placido disc image of every patient who's undergoing cataract surgery of their anterior surface of the cornea and their tear film. If the Myers are not concentric, perfectly round, instead they're warped or wobbly or irregular in width, that means that the patient has pre-existing ocular surface disease. Depending on the severity of it, I may choose to postpone the cataract surgery and totally rehabilitate the ocular surface in order to get better measurements. And also by showing the patients their irregular Myers on the placido disc, the patients realize that they have pre-existing dry eye syndrome and that the cataract surgery did not give it to them or that the surgeon did not give them dry eye because otherwise they don't understand it. They may end up with dry eye just because of advanced age and so forth and they may falsely correlate it with the cataract surgery as being the cause. One of the nice features about the OPD3 is the ease with which our technicians can use it. The patient doesn't have to be moved from instrument to instrument to instrument to capture all of these um, tests and measurements. Instead, the patient sits at one chair, and within 10 to 12 seconds, literally, um, all of these measurements are captured. It's easy for any technician to do. The patient just stares at a light, and then we move it over, and we do the same thing to the other eye. It's patient-friendly, it's staff-friendly, and it's surgeon-friendly because it gives me an amazing 
breadth of information in order for me to customize and select the implant for each patient. I really don't find any challenges in using it. It's easy to learn how to use it for both the technician, it's easy for the patient, but there is a bit of a challenge for the surgeon to learn how to decipher all of the maps. So there is um, information on the website of Marco to help surgeons learn how to interpret the maps. And the Marco reps will be more than happy to help the surgeons understand how to look at each map and what value each map provides to the surgeon.